<laughs> Welcome to Math 20 Dash One Sugar Review Practice Exam. Okay, I won't talk like this the whole time. Uh, so let's get going here. Uh, exams tomorrow. Hopefully, you're watching this uh, the day before the exam, at least, or have gone over these exam examples. Uh, so let's try these questions out. Let me just make my head a little bit smaller here. Let's put my head up in the maybe the top corner. All right, so which of the following statements can be made about this diagram? So we're trying to figure out which are true or which are false. So the angle is in standard position. Yeah, because we started on the x-axis, we work counterclockwise. And again, if, even if you work counterclockwise, it would be standard position. So that's true. Uh, let's do this. Let's get rid of that. Let's get a pen out. A little blue check mark there. Check mark, that's true. Um, they're on the initial, mm -hmm, the points AB. That's on the terminal arm. Mm, that's wrong. All right, this is on the terminal. That's not good. Uh, if they were given, you could determine the measure. Yeah, yeah. You can create a little triangle. You can find the reference angle using one of the ratios. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Easy peasy. And if the value was given, we could determine any possible. Yeah, if we knew the angle, because of similar triangles and how the coast ratio works, we can find any triangle that fits in there. Doesn't matter if it's big or small. Yeah, you could definitely do that too. So that's true, false, false, true. So if I have one, one, zero, was it true, true? No, true, false, James. What was I thinking? True, false, true, true. If we're gonna do that, right? Yeah. Uh, if it's positive, sign is positive. This is our cast rule. It's a typical kind of question where we're just trying to figure out if I use the add sugar to coffee rule, which quadrant could this be in? Let's see, so. Uh, if sine is positive, so that means it can't be, or wouldn't be in, it's because this is positive, it's not going to be in these two quadrants down there. So I cross those off and you're like, okay, so it's not going to be there, okay? And cosine is negative, so if cosine is negative, it's not going to be in this quadrant, and, oh no, cosine is negative, oops, oops, Let's fix that up. Cosine is negative. It means it's not going to be in the first quadrant because cosine is negative in that quadrant. And it can't be in the fourth quadrant. I already know that's not there. So the only quadrant that's left is this one. So that's 90 to 180. So it's got to be this one here. Right? Okay. I guess you could have color coded that a little bit better. Maybe I'll make that up. This one, this way, so you can see what we did here. Okay, there you go. I don't know if that's going to help you or not. It's like legend. Uh, okay, so we had to figure out if... Oh, they told us if angle M is in standard position and it's in quadrant 4. So I'm going to draw my quadrant 4 angle here. There's angle M. I don't know how big it is. They just want to know if they did some ratios based on the add sugar to coffee rule again. Add sugar to coffee rule. Would tan be positive? Because if it's greater than zero, it's positive. Or negative? Or would sine be positive? Or would it be negative? They don't talk about cos. But in that quadrant, cos would be positive. Because C. But because C is positive in that quadrant, everything else is negative. So one, so this one would be true, and this would be true. They both be negative. So two and four. There we go. Cool. Oh, this one's just a standard reference angle one here. That's not too bad. So first one I gotta figure with that line. So uh, 286. Somewhere in that quadrant, past the 270 line. So that's about 286 to me. Then my reference angle is going to be this angle pointing towards that 360 line. So that's going to be 360 minus 286. That's going to find me my reference angle. So remember, your reference angle is always going to be less than uh, less than 90 degrees. Look at the time. Oh, it's almost midnight. Oh, 
Uh, less than 90 degrees, and 74 degrees is definitely less than 90 degrees, and there's my answer. Uh, so far, not too bad. This is pretty easy. Just kind of cruising along here. Well, I like this could be. So there's multiple answers here. So there's, there's possibly a couple of answers here because tan is negative, right? They're not telling us which quadrant it is in, but it's negative here. So that means tan could either be in, because of the A sugar to coffee rule, it could be in this quadrant, or it could be in this quadrant. We don't know which one it is. It could be all the way around, or it could be in this one. Okay. But the good thing about this is because tangent to always uh, tells us the opposite over the adjacent. These two triangles are technically the same triangle. There's just some opposite quadrants here. So one is in this quadrant. We have a triangle here. Because tan tells us two pieces of information, I know that the opposite would be three, and that's always that vertical piece, and the adjacent is two, but one of those has to be negative, because the negative, uh, and two is negative in this one. And then I can also, if I wanted to, I can also draw the triangle, the same triangle down here, the opposite is negative three, because it's going down, and the adjacent is positive two. Okay. But that just makes the hypotenuse the same for both of these, because a squared plus b squared is equal to 13, I'm assuming, which is equal to c squared, and then c is the square root of 13. Okay, so both of these have the same hypotenuse. Now it says which one could be correct because it could be multiple answers, depending on which quadrant you're looking at. But one of these is going to be true. Let's double check here. So sine, sine could be root 3 over root, yeah. If it was in quadrant 2, it could be positive 3 over root 13 or negative, okay. Okay, cos can't be 3 over root 13. That's making sense. Cross that off. That's the wrong number. Sine can't be that because that's the wrong number as well. It's got to be a 3. Cos, oh, there's only one that works is A. So it looks like this is supposed to be in quadrant 2. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm just going to write that down on the side over here. So here, if it's in this top quadrant, it would be sine is equal to theta. Okay. It's equal to opposite, 3 over root 13. Or, if it was in this quadrant down here, it would be negative 3 over root 13. Depends on which quadrant it was in. But that's fine. All right, we found the answer is the first one there. I think this question is similar. Yeah, this one's a very similar question. Again, we don't know which quadrant it is in. You notice that these are all positive here. So I'm just going to treat this as if this is in the first quadrant. That's the only time, that's the only time anything would all be positive, or all, all of them would be positive. So this is angle Q right there. I'm just going to draw a triangle around that, like we usually do. Uh, sine tells us the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 1 over 5, you just have to figure out, because you see these wildly different, they're all over 5, but they have wildly different, uh, looks like adjacent sides here, because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go 5 squared is equal to like, a squared plus 1 squared, so find A. What's 5 squared minus 1 squared? 5 squared minus 1 squared, that's 24. Take the square root. Which statement could be true? So crossed off, crossed off, crossed off. Maybe? That's just the wrong answer. It's supposed to be a 24. This is supposed to be the square root, and this one, yeah. But now double check. Is 2 root 6 the same thing? So I can take a divide by 2. I get 12. I'm just going to make a mixed radical out of this. Root 12, and then divide by 2, and 6, and that's just 2 and 3. So a pair of 2's pops out, 
and the two and three pop back together. Yeah, two root six. So, check mark. All right, cool. Not too bad. Well, this is a fun one because usually we want to find those other ratios, but this one just says just determine the value of the angle. So we're actually going to solve this. I like this question. This is the, this is building up to what we've been trying to do. Okay, so I'm going to draw negative 10, 4 out. So negative 10, 4 lands somewhere right about there. That's negative 10, 4. All right, so I'm going to draw also the terminal arm that goes through it. And at the same time, because that's what we usually do, I'm going to draw a little triangle here. All right, that goes up to that point. So if I know that point is negative 10, 4, that means I had to go over negative 10 to get there this way, and then I had to go up 4 to get there as well. Um, I could find the hypotenuse and stuff and find out all the different ratios, but we have one already, right? So kind of just make our lives a little bit easier. We can find out what this reference angle is first by using one of the ratios, sine, cos, or tan. I'm going to use tan here, and there's a reason, because we already have the opposite, we have the adjacent. So let's just use tan. What's the point of trying to find what the hypotenuse is? If I wanted to, I could. I don't want to. I'm going to take the tan inverse to find on both sides. So I go, now what's this going to do when I take the tan inverse? I find the reference angle that way. So we go tan inverse of just the positive version, right? I guess I'm going to reduce that down. It doesn't really matter though. Calculator will do it for us. So 20, what does it say? To the nearest degree. So I get 22 degrees. But I'm going to put 21.8 here for now. Okay. And I'm going to use that to find the bigger blue angle, which is the answer I want, which is going to be, because it's less than 180, I'm going to go 180 minus this 21.8. Minus the 21.8. So I get 158 degrees. There you go. There's no really way to verify it, just that's what it is, I guess. I could go back there and see if it actually goes negative 4 over 10. Maybe that's true, is it? Yeah, it's actually 0.4, negative 0.4, which is right. Cool. Oh, but it What do they do wrong? So they're doing like the exact value stuff and they're trying to figure out using the special triangle because these angles are 330 and 120. Um, they're just trying to figure out where they went wrong. Honestly, I could just punch in my calculator and go sine 310. It's negative a half. That's right so far. Cos 120 is supposed to be negative one half. So we got a problem here with this step because it's supposed to be negative a half and then it's supposed to be negative a half, negative a half. Now let's double check. It is 330 in quadrant 4. Check mark, that's right. 120 in quadrant 2. Check mark, that's right. Okay. Did they have the right reference angle? So I'm going to draw angle 330 on this one. 330 would be right here. And the reference angle would be 30 degrees, so that's check mark. Check mark, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with this guy over here. 120 is in... Right about there. 120. And the reference angle is 60 degrees. That's check mark. Okay, so that seems good. But now they went through here and they said, okay, let's draw a little triangle in here. So they drew a little triangle. And then they drew a little triangle. Let's try it out right bigger because that's 60. I drew really big. 
Okay, we drew those, and then they kind of used the special triangles to help us figure out what's happening here. So they took a special triangle that across from the 60 is a root 3. Adjacent to this one is negative 1, and there's a hypotenuse of 2. They did the same thing here. Across from this would be negative 1, this would be root 3. It's kind of it's kind of laid down flat. Okay, so then they went over here and said, okay, sine theta is supposed to be opposite to negative 1 over 2. Oh, check mark. Okay, that's good so far. But then over here, if I go cos theta, which is adjacent, negative 1 over 2. Uh oh, not good. So the first step, step 3. There we go. If I were to correct it, it would be negative a half plus another negative a half, which would be negative one. That's just, that's wrong too, but this is the first one right here. First problem, step three. Cool. All right, let's keep on, let's keep on going here. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's going to be late. 12 of them. Surprise the alarm hasn't gone off yet. I might have to run out of here soon. Hopefully I stopped the video at that point. Okay, uh, yeah, so we're trying to figure out which is the best strategy to use, uh, which ones can be, I can actually use the sign line. So remember, this, to use the sign line, I need a pair of information here. So for sure, I can use sign line on this one. Check one. Definitely use that because there's a pair there. Over here, there's a pair here, so check one. No pairs, oh, and oh, there is a pair here, right? Because I can find out this angle pretty fast using the 180 rule, right? So 180 minus 22 minus 39, I can find out this is 118 degrees. So because I know that angle, I can use that one. But this first, this middle one here, there's no pairs, there's no way to find the other angles. So the only ones I can do is 1, 3, and 4. So it's got to be C in this case, not 3. So I cross that one off. No, oh, we can't use that one. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Here's the thing. Cross that one off. It's got to be B. Always have to check my answers. So I cross threes off. That one had a 3 in it. It's 1, 2, and 4. That's it. All right, uh, the smallest angle, we're getting to the end here. These ones are solving questions, I a lot. I, I purposely made a lot of questions here. Uh, we're trying to find the smallest angle in this triangle. And we're trying to be smart right, about this. So if I label this off and say like down here is 15 point, that's A, there's A up there. And then I said over here was C, this is 11.7, and this is B, 9.3. The smallest angle is going to be this one right here, right? The smaller the side, the smaller the angle, right? So this is the smallest side. So that's going to be the smallest angle. So I just have to find B. Don't have to find any other angles. Just find B because I'm looking for the smallest one, right? All right, so I'm going to go cos, because I know all the sides. I can't use sine law here. There's no pair. So I'm going to cos B. And in here, I just have to make sure that when I go minus, I go minus the 9.3 squared. Then just the other two numbers, 15.2 squared plus 11.7 squared, 2 times that 15.2 times the 11.7. I'll just put big brackets on the bottom there. That was pretty important. It's important to have it on the top too. If you have one of the older calculators, you can try this with one step. I would recommend just typing for this part of the equation, typing in the top part, just the top part first, hit enter, divide by bracket 2 times 15.2 times 11.7. So I'm going to get a decimal here. I'm just going to write that decimal down. And then to find the angle, take the cos inverse. Cos inverse, my answer, and I get 30, it's the nearest degree, 38 degrees. That seems pretty small to me. Cool. 
Which strategy would you use to solve for the missing side? Oh, I would just solve for the missing side. If it said solve the triangle, then I would use cosine. Just cosine. Yeah, I think I, I made a mistake when I took this out. I might have printed it off. Actually. So that's probably should be crossed off. Use the cosine law first. There's no pairs. So I can't use the sine law. Can't use the sine law. It's not a right angle triangle. Remember, you can only use these for right angles. So you have to use the cosine law. I'm not going to continue on. I would use the sine law after that. Okay, never mind. Let's go and go on. Uh, these ones, i got to solve these triangles. got to find all the missing pieces here. All right. What do we have? 20, 20. Yeah, okay. Let's go at this. Uh, yeah, so we're going to figure out. So we got, we got no pairs here, so I'm going to start off with the cosine law. So maybe I'll start labeling this triangle. Let's just call this A, B, C. Let's just do that. So we're trying to find side C first, okay? Let's find this side here. This is A and this is B over here. Um, well, it's nice and convenient the way I labeled this triangle. The side you're supposed to find is called C. And I called it C already, so that's good. And these are just the other two sides. So I'll use the cosine law here. Minus 2 times 8 times 14 times cos. 30 degrees. Remember that angle corresponds to the side we're trying to find. So type it in. Okay. So we get c squared is equal to 66.01 centimeters squared. Yeah. Because I had to take the square root of this answer. That's right. So c is 8 point, I'm going to go to one decimal place here, 8.1 centimeters. Oh, that's really close to being almost an isosceles triangle. Now remember, once you have this, you want to use all the decimals as possible, so I've got all these decimals in my calculator. So I'm going to use those. Remember this number, 8.124672. Okay. Now, when you're trying to find the other angle, find the next smallest angle first. So we're going to try to find A next here, right? So we did this one first. I'll just play that one. And then I want to find A next, right? So we'll look for angle A. Okay, so I'm going to use sine law here now because now we have a pair. So technically we have a pair. So we've got this 8.1 here. Okay. So I can use that as a pair information there. And then go sine A over A, so 8 centimeters, over this 8.124 on the bottom down here, all those decimals, sine 30 degrees, because those guys go together. And then we cross multiply divide. We're going to find sine A to start off with, right? A bunch of decimals, and I want to find angle A afterwards. Ignore that little dash there. So 8 times sine 30. System oh, environment, shit. please plug your car on the outside reader and exit the building. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry if I swore there. That freaks me out, that little alarm. Okay. So. Cross multiply divide. So we're going to go 8 times sine 30. Then divide by my answer. The answer from the previous question. We have all those decimals that we need to. Okay? So we're going to get this decimal here. Oh, let's make sure my thing is working there. 0 0.492, dot, 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 dot. And then we're going to take this sine inverse. And my answer, we get 29.5 degrees. Okay, so that's good so far. Then, to find out the last angle, you can use the 180 rule. Okay, 180 minus the 29.5 minus the 
Oop, minus the 30 degrees that we already had there. It's 180 minus my answer. Minus my 30. 120. Point five degrees. I'm just going to go to one decimal place. Always a good practice. There we go. No, 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 not too bad. Oh, next question. Let's put a little squiggle here. All, right. All that work and just flatten it out. Eight. Okay, so we got a pair, so that's nice. Uh, we should label this triangle off here. Um, well, actually, up here, I should probably put the numbers in the triangle. So maybe you didn't uh, have the same labeling as I did. So, I guess I was pretty lazy when I was creating these triangles. It says solve the triangles. So we're going to find all the missing sides. Uh, ooh, what did I just do there? So let's label this triangle so we have some good things here. So we're going to call, I'm going to call this one A that we know already. I'm going to call this B up here. I'm going to call this one C down here. Let's see if this is B. Okay, let's find, a, let's find angle B. Because to find C, I would going to have to find either side C or angle C. So... Yeah, so let's find what B happens to be first. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Is B the largest angle? Oh, man. What have I done? Have I done this? Oh, what have I done to you guys? Yeah. Hmm. Have I made angle B? I'll just, let's just trust this. It looks like it's less than angle. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, it looks like it's less than 90. If I were to put it, yeah, I'm going to go with that. All right. So I'm going to go sine B over B is equal to uh, sine, oh, that's a weird looking sine, 25. It's getting a bit late. It's almost, yeah, I know. Kids kept me up a little bit too late at home, so I needed to deal with them first. All right, I'm going to do a little cross multiply divide here. So I get 0.8, oh no, 0.66 here. 0, 3, 4, dot, 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 dot. Make sure to take that sign inverse. So I get 41.8. Three degrees here. We will, at least I'm going to go one decimal place again. So I get find B here to be 41.3 degrees. Okay. So once I know B, that's the first thing I did. I'm going to find C by using the 180 rule. So I'll minus the 25 minus the 41.3. And that's going to find me 100 and, hmm, yeah, let's just go with it. Ah, oh, I missed this triangle. It doesn't look right. Let's just, go. yeah, let's just, Mr. Allen messed up here, huh? Whoops. Does that look like 113 degrees in that picture? It does not. But you know what? Just the way it's going to be. All right. And then, once this is 113 degrees, there's really no other way to do this question apart from trying to draw it out and seeing that there might be two triangles to be able to draw here. Um, I'm just going to go, yeah, so I'm going to go number three here, find side C, which is the sine law here. So I'm going to go C over sine 113.7 degrees. I've got all the decimal calculator here. And I'll pick the ones that we know. So I'm going to go 8 over sine 25. 
Okay, so cross multiply, divide, and you find that C, oh, don't want to do anything fancy. Sine answer times 8 divided by sine 25, 17 feet wide, 17.3. Yeah, I wasn't happy, but I should probably redo that triangle. Make sure it actually looks a little bit better. All right. God, I did all the squiggles and they all disappeared. Meh. All right. Let's try to make it look my mustache here. All right. Now this one should be okay because, well, I don't know. There should be, there's no ambiguous cases when it comes to side, side, sides like this. So there's only really one triangle. I just have to, did I draw it correctly? I'm hoping I did. Looks pretty good. Uh, so let's label this out. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this B, I'm gonna call this C again. And let's say I wanna find angle C first. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. So number one, I'm gonna go cos C, okay? Because I don't have any angles, I have no pairs, so I can't use this sine law. I just got to remember, if I'm trying to find angle C, I have to put side C in this spot over here where it says minus C squared in the formula. And then I'm going to put the other things here, 2 times 5 times 10, okay, that's on the bottom there. So this is not too bad, so I'm just going to go right to angle C here. 5 squared plus 10 squared minus 9 squared divided by 2 times 5 times 10. Sweet. And then take the cos inverse. So I get, yep, this seems right, 60, this is going to be 63.9. Awesome. All right, so the next thing I probably want to find is, Well, now we can find any angle. I'm going to find B next. It is the smaller of the two angles. So I'm going to find angle B first. I'm going to go sine B over 5. And then I'm going to go sine 63.9. I'm going to use the decimal in my calculator as much as possible over. What angle is that? Oh, i got to draw that in there. So this is uh, 63.9. So that goes across the 9. Okay, 9 millimeters there. Okay, so cross, multiply, divide. So I could have used the cosine law again if I wanted to. I decided against that for some reason. I always like the sine law. The sine law is a fun one. It just does have that one limitation. Uh, angle B ends up being... I did the sine inverse stuff already, so... I get 29.9 degrees. And then I'm going to find angle A last. Okay, so this is going to be 29.9. Angle A, using the 180 rule, angle A is 180 minus the 29.9 minus the 36.9. And what do we get? Oops, I'm going to use my rounded answer here. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it doesn't cause too many problems. 86.2. It is the largest side, and it is the largest angle. There we go. Sweet. That's the end, right? That's the end. Uh, hopefully that helps out. If you watched the video, if you didn't watch the video, hopefully the PDF works. And I will see you all on Tuesday. <laughs>